you can start a game in the arcade and finish it at home. Astounding, right? Here, have a look. In the year 1990, before esports were around and before you could get more money for clicking on heads than actually saving them, professional gaming wasn't really a thing. I mean, sure, there were little baby tournaments in arcades across the world, but for a while, being a pro gamer had no real power. That was until a little company by the name of Nintendo came around and decided that things had to be different. And thus, the Nintendo World Championships came into existence. A nationwide massive tournament where competitors from all walks of life could prove that they themselves were gaming gods by playing randomized challenges based on popular Nintendo games. And though I was far too young and non-existent to compete in the year 1990, when I found out about this as a child, I always wished for a chance to prove that I myself am a god Nintendo gamer. It wasn't until much, much, much later that Nintendo would finally give me the chance by releasing an official video game based on the Nintendo World Championship, complete with a set of randomized challenges across NES titles like the original contest itself. Our mission is simple. All I have to do is S-rank all of this game's challenges. But this is going to be a lot easier said than done, because this game definitely acts like the Nintendo World Championship. These were some of the hardest challenges and tightest times I've ever had to compete with in my life. Let me explain. For starters, there are 13 different games, each with their own unique set of challenges that range from the difficulties normal, hard, master, and legend. The easier missions are something like, hey, go grab the mushroom as fast as you can. While the harder ones are more like, hey buddy, Speed run the entire fucking game. <laughs> I'm not kidding, that's a real one. But our journey of a thousand miles had to start with our first step. And so we jump into the first challenge. I mean, it's the first challenge. How hard can it be? Yeah, come on. No, it ain't. What? Ah! First try, open your eyes. Let's go. Yeah, after being stuck in a three second challenge for over 50 attempts, I knew that I had my work cut out for me. We walk into the first Legend of Zelda mission, where all you have to do is walk into a door and grab an item, which is easy enough, right? Wrong, dumbass, you literally have to try to be frame perfect and turn early enough on the exact pixel that Link's hitbox actually grabs the sword in time. I think now's the perfect time to say that a great majority of my time was spent back battling for milliseconds, with attempts sometimes only being like 3 or 4 milliseconds faster, which I thought was kind of insane. Like my first attempt at this challenge was 821, but I spent a bunch of attempts trying to knock it below 8 seconds for that S rank. Next up we have Metroid, and I'm not even gonna sugarcoat this one, this was easily one of the worst games on the list. I'm not saying the game itself is bad, but Metroid controls are very specific and normally when old games get complicated with their controls, they don't really hold up well. Still, since all I had to do was jump up a minor platform and land on a power-up, this wasn't so bad. Yet. Next up, we had our first Donkey Kong mission. All I had to do was climb up a ladder, so I surprisingly S-ranked it on my first try. Don't get used to that. I can't imagine this game ever getting difficult, though. Like, ever. <laughs> That's sarcasm. I'm, I'm, I'm being sarcastic. Kid Icarus was next, and since I've never even seen what this game looks like, I knew it was going to be a problem. But we already started our challenge, and I wasn't going to quit now. I mean, Icarus originally flew too close to the sun, and that worked out fine for him. Ah! So I think we'll be okay. I guess. There were a lot of finicky things with this one, like how you could only have a few arrows out on screen, or how sometimes the arrows just flew upward for no reason, and I never found out how to make it happen. But after struggling due to jank, learning how to crouch jump, damage boost, and angle my arrows better, I managed to sneak by and get the S rank, which really confused me because it was again only 9 milliseconds away from the previous record. Next up was Mario 2, not Lost Levels, the other goofy one with 
the turnips. And all we had to do was fall in front of a door and enter it. If you use the awkward screen wrap mechanic, you can slightly angle your landing on the left side and land directly in front of the door. So once I did that, we got it. And then we jumped over to Excite Bike. I have almost nothing to say about this game. It's just not a great time and also has the most annoying background noises ever made. I mean, listen to that baby purr for hours. The whole speed aspect of this game is just using your turbo button as much as you can before your bike overheats and also landing correctly so your little motor man doesn't fling himself straight into heaven. The fuck? I guess a funeral would make this a lot less exciting. It, it turned into morning bike after that. I ended up getting it in a couple of minutes, and then I decided to do something silly. I gotta, I gotta use the bathroom real quick. Oh god, I gotta hurry up. We're still recording, we're still recording, but I don't wanna ruin the scene. Oh shit, oh shit. We've respawned. We've respawned, gamers. Since I was struggling so much on the easiest stages of the game, I decided that I wanted to try one of the harder stages just to see how much the difficulty in this game would scale. And surprisingly, I S-ranked a master level stage on my first try. So my theory is that the longer the stages are, the larger margin for error they allow. Maybe that's what's going on. Who knows? I didn't make the game. Next up, we got Ice Climbers. I actually played this game a decent amount as a kid because I got it on one of those bootleg plug-and-play consoles my parents bought at a swap meet. I can already hear Nintendo lawyers coming to my house with a cease and desist. I was five years old, man. All I had to do was reach the second floor, which wasn't so bad. Then we played Balloon Fight, which is our third gimmick game in a row, so I'll be calling this section Gimmick Block from now on. Also, we beat the first challenge on our first try, so hooray for Gimmick Block being over. For now. Next, we have to get a mushroom in Mario 3, which made me realize that so far, all of the Mario missions have been very tight. Like, in this one, you have to be smart enough to know that you can run off the first platform without jumping. I'm not really complaining though, because Mario games feel great to play, so it was fine. We jump into the Adventures of Link, which is the weird side-scrolling one that I always avoided because it looked really awkward, but it controls very well. All I had to do was kill enemies by aiming my dagger correctly, but hey, it was fun. I wasn't familiar with your game, Link 2, I apologize. We jump into Lost Levels and all I have to do here is eat a poison mushroom and then die? I guess someone at Nintendo headquarters was having a bad day? And now for our last game on the list, Kirby's Adventure, which has got to be one of the most awkward games I have ever played. Up makes you float. Running requires you to double tap and there's a very, and I mean very severe case of screen lag. But the first challenge was just absorbing something, so it wasn't so bad. Yet. Now that we've completed a single challenge in every game, I'm going to start moving a little bit faster since we know what to expect. We collect a bunch of coins for a Mario mission, and then do a Legend of Zelda mission where you have to kill a wave of enemies. Which is the first time we experience RNG. I use quotation marks because I know that it's not actually RNG, and there's specific things that speedrunners can do to manipulate the enemies via spacing or timing or some other stuff that pros do when they grind this game for hundreds of hours, but I'm not one of them, okay? I'm, I'm just a guy. So to me, a man who can't see into the Matrix, that is just RNG. We shoot two spiky things in Metroid and struggle for a bit, but find out how to maneuver her big, awkward body to actually do things on time. We have to get a hammer in Donkey Kong, which isn't so bad, but since this may be the oldest game on the list, it's severely limited. Like, you can't buffer inputs and have to press left on the D-pad the exact frame that you're on the top of the ladder, or it won't work, which will cost you the tenth of a millisecond that you need to win. It feels so dated. Speaking of dated, does anyone know how Mario was able to pool Pauline? Kid Icarus makes me break a few pots, which wasn't awful. Even though the controls for this game are weird, they kind of grew on me over time. Then we hit Mario 2 to pull up a turnip. Not much to say there. Exciting Bike is just as annoying this time as it was the last time because... Well, you get it. 
Though Ice Climbers has weird hitboxes and ice physics, the challenges here aren't that bad. They kind of feel like a buy, and as far as gimmick block goes, it's definitely the easiest. Next, we have to kill three guys in balloon fight, and honestly, this one is just so ass. I wish I could explain how bad balloon fight controls, but imagine a water level with ice physics and input lag. Now add a bit of RNG, and voila. Still, with tight maneuvering, I can kill the enemies before they get in the air, so I guess that's a W? Mario 3 makes me collect coins, which is just a battle of milliseconds to get the perfect jump height and position. I picked up a bag in Link 2, which is clearly a filler mission, and then I have to jump on a paratroopa as Luigi in Lost Levels, which I nail almost instantly. We have to go over a little hill in Kirby's Adventure, which is deceptively difficult. This game is like a combination of very precise controls and also funky, hunky, bunky control schemes, because like, why is the up button? And float. Still, we nail it and head back to the top. Next up, we have to beat the end of Mario 1-1, which has a very tight deadline, to the point where some of the attempts are better by a single millisecond. The developer of this game was definitely a Mario speedrunner, because this is some difficulty scaling favoritism right here. But after massive amounts of failed attempts, we get an S rank and push forward. We bomb a wall in Legend of Zelda, and the only time saves here are dodging the enemies and knowing the exact earliest pixel that you can drop the bomb so that you can get the explosion to open the cave. It's whatever. The Metroid map makes me shoot a door open and collect a power up, which still isn't really anything yet, but I struggle with it. <laughs> I'll be honest. And then Donkey Kong made me beat stage one, which took a few tries, but it wasn't so bad. It was also our first hard challenge. The only thing hard here is probably Probably Donkey Kong, I'll be honest. Buddy is probably bricked. <laughs> Kid Icarus makes me leave a door. Tutorial. And then Mario 2 makes me get a mushroom in subspace. This is called subspace? Like the emissary? Smashy bros, whoa! Excite bike. Excite bike. Ice climbers makes me climb higher. And while riding, I got to thinking, why do I look like that? Why am I so nervous? Is that normal? Like, chill out, man. We hit a hard balloon fight stage where we have to maneuver with precision around floating spikes, which feels awful. Just, just straight up awful. Mario Bros. 3 is as simple as collecting a super leaf. Link 2 makes me jump into a fairy. Mario Lost Levels makes me get a mushroom by bouncing it with a block. Kirby makes me suck a man right up. And it may look like we just bruised through these, but at this point, we've basically only been playing easy challenges and haven't even put a dent in the content of the game. With two rounds of minigames done, I think we all kind of got the gist of what these early missions were shaping up to be. Tutorials for when the challenges actually get harder. I mean, sure, some of them were very tight and somewhat frame perfect, but for the sake of saving us all a bunch of time reiterating somewhat pointless tasks, I think it's time for us to jump to the hard and master tier challenges. The challenges where the game basically says, all right, buddy, you get it. Now be good. Starting with Excite Bike. Excite Bike. The Excite Bike mission is basically a near 40 second course where you have to wheelie over tiny logs to not fall over, lean during jumps to get more distance and skip other hills, dodge puddles of oil on the floor, use your turbo precisely without overheating, land near perfect every time to not slow down, and of course, listen to this noise the entire time that you do it. God, I love the Excite Bike. It's so sick. This challenge alone took me like 20 minutes, which may not sound like a lot, but I think I'm kind of good at games. Like, I believe so, at least. I figure things out kind of fast. And if Excite Bike, one of the easier games on the list, was able to best me for that long, how bad is it gonna be when we do Mario stages? The Ice Climbers Master Mission is a little bit annoying, but manageable. Popo really coming in clutch by giving me rest times between the harder sections, and for that, I kiss you, Popo. Mm -hmm. This balloon fight section was outright awful. You had to kill five dudes as fast as possible, but the controls sucked. They do different things every time, and sometimes a fish just eats you as you fly by the water. 
I don't know why it just happens. The AI is also smart, so if you're not fast enough, the bastards fly to the top of the screen in order to make themselves unhittable. This may be the first troll enemy ever invented in video games. This Lost Levels challenge was brutal because the windows are so tight, and I know technically it's not master tier yet, but the fact that multiple times I got the same time down to the milliseconds just shows how agonizing these can be. Master Donkey Kong was just beating stage three, but the hilarious thing about this one is that the fireballs are totally RNG, like to the point where if you die to them and the game rewinds to give you another shot, it's possible for the fireballs to do something differently then. Like these fireballs must be controlled by the souls of people who at one point wronged Donkey Kong because that is some next level artificial intelligence. But still, we beat this pretty fast because I had a weird Donkey Kong phase on DK64. I don't remember why, but Cranky Kong makes you play it in order to earn like a Nintendo coin or something. Also, while we're on the topic of DK64, did you know that Wrinkly Kong, the old Lady Kong that does Pilates and plays the Nintendo 64 during Donkey Kong Country 3 canonically dies between DKC3 and DK64, so you have to talk to her ghost? Like, is that not fucked up? We do a Master Excite Bike stage again, and maybe it's the fact that the last one took me so long, or subconsciously the soul of some old gamer possessed me to save me from motorcycle sound torment, but I beat this one in like four minutes. I was clearly very elated. The Ice Climber Master Stage was easy, thank you Popo, and Popo we trust. Then we hit what I consider to be our first major hurdle in the game, the second Balloon Fight Master Challenge, which was a precision flying segment with instant kill spikes and a scrolling screen. I wish I could say exactly how this stage made me feel, but I don't want to get demonetized and I don't think that there's a slur for balloon people. We hit a Master Challenge for Mario Lost Levels and I'm starting to get why this game wasn't released in America at first. The platforming sections are incredibly awkward. I mean, sure, if you train this game, you can figure out how to stay at max speed, but why would I train for this when I could just hit chest? It took a very large amount of trial and error finding out where I can jump without bumping into some flying dork or a piranha plant that's placed exactly in the worst spot, but we get it after a few attempts. Our next mission is in Kirby's Adventure, and though this is technically not master tier, it's one of the most challenging missions in the entire game. Which is insane because it's just getting into a door on the right side of the level. In fact, I'll say it now, Kirby is easily the hardest game on this entire roster. And it's not only head and shoulders above the next in the competition, I'm talking it's head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes above everything else. Let me explain. Besides the very difficult and precise movements you need to do in order to keep your speed up, there's a massive, and I mean massive amount of things that can go wrong. If you accidentally hit up on the d-pad while jumping, you'll float which slows you down enough to not make it in the time that you need. I know we've said this word before, but this game's enemies are like if RNG was thrown into a random number generator and then randomized. They are RNG squared. Sometimes they play nice and stay where they need to be, sometimes they spawn in different locations and hit you, which will most likely result in a loss. Sometimes they don't spawn at all, which I never found out how to replicate. They just didn't show up to work that day. Sometimes they pre-fire their shots and are immediately doing an attack the second that you see them, which will result in a loss if you get hit, but you want to know the worst part. Even if the abilities do not hit you, they will frequently cause failure because the particles in this game make it play at about 40% speed because of lag. And since the timer is focused on being a real-time timer, the lag isn't factored in at all and will cost you multiple seconds if the enemies are being dicks. And this is probably obvious, but if you get hit by one of these abilities, Kirby will have a different animation, which takes about two business weeks of hit stun, making your run impossible. I I literally had to swap to Joy-Cons because their D-pad allows me to never accidentally press up and float to ruin the speed of my run, and after a decent struggle and a lot of yelling, we managed to beat the mission. We do a hard Mario mission, which again isn't master, but it's incredibly tight, and I actually speed ran Mario for 24 hours once. I I'm not bad at Mario, but the timing of these, the timing of these are tighter than, than my ass. 
Like I was stuck here for a while, just shaving off a couple of milliseconds at a time. They wanted me to be near perfect. And thankfully, I am. <laughs> yeah. This was humbling because I couldn't really blame anything but myself. I knew that if I didn't play better, I'd never be featured in a summoning salt video. And then the run happened. Yeah, that, that's not even Master Tier, by the way. The Master Donkey Kong stage is about breaking the construction site in Zone 3, which isn't too bad except for the RNG fireballs. We played the Master Kid Icarus stage, which is just a very long challenge, but in this case, long stages normally mean not that tight deadlines, so we beat it in a few minutes. We do a Master Tier swimming stage in Lost Levels, which is a swimming level with Hammer Bros, and that's fantastic. Do you know how angry someone has to be to try and kill you with hammers while you're drowning? It's impressive. I it's honestly impressive. And before someone tells me, Scooch, that's a turtle. He doesn't have to breathe. I don't care. I beat it in my first 400 tries because I'm a gamer. Now it was time for more Metroid. And these missions are where the lag switch really starts to make me want to disconnect IRL. I had to not only do a decent amount of precision platforming, but also deal with lag when enough enemies appeared on screen. Paired with Samus's six foot three body and absolutely awkward movement, this section was total ass. Making any mistakes at all was guaranteed to ruin the run. And over the course of the 30 to 45 minutes I spent stuck here, I also realized that getting an S rank time wasn't possible if you let the game lag even a little bit. So not only did I have to snipe enemies from afar so they can't come and consume all of the frames in the game, but I also had to make sure that during the boss fight I was able to kill Ridley fast enough. And hilariously enough, during the Ridley fight, if you miss one missile, at all, you have to wait for it to hit the back wall before you can continue your firing spree. And that could cost you enough time to ruin your run. Now that we've talked about challenging simple stages, near perfect long stages, and outright annoying master stages, I think we could finally sink our teeth into the hardest stages in this entire game. That's right, the final mission for every single one of these titles. The legend section that would prove that I am definitely the GOAT of all time. And I'll even give them a difficulty ranking. Starting with Donkey Kong, which initially scared me because the controls for this game are pretty tight, but all we had to do was beat the three stages. Honestly, the only real difficulty was the RNG fireballs trying to burn down my dreams. Besides that, it only took a few tries and with them, we dominated Donkey Kong. So I'll give it a C tier. Next up, we had Kid Icarus. This one was annoying for completely different reasons. I had to defeat Twin Bellows, which is fine. The problem is that in order to get to them, I had to walk through an entire maze, which is like 20 screens long, and taking a single wrong turn would lead to failure. But once the memorization was done, the rest of it kind of fell into place. Fortunately, my memory's kind of good, so we only took about 10 minutes to do this one. I'll give it a B tier. The excitement bike legend stage was excite bike it was basically a really challenging stage where every single mechanic was put to the test landing managing turbo wheelies and whatever else it sounds hard but the hardest part about it was listening to that engine purr again we end up beating it in about 10 or so attempts and with it one gimmick game was now dead forever C tier. The Ice Climbers Legend stage wasn't hard at all. It was just climbing to the top of a single stage and touching a bird's feet like a like a like a British Dan Schneider, I guess. And with that, Ice Climbers was officially clum. I'm gonna give that a D tier. With the joke, I guess. The Legend Balloon Fight stage was very RNG reliant. It was all about killing as many enemies as you can before they take off and then praying their natural Dragon Ball Z level instincts didn't randomly kick in to ruin your chances. We struggle for a bit, but eventually get lucky and clear the S rank. So I'm gonna give that, I don't know, a B tier because it was so random. Next up was Mario Lost Levels, where I just had to get to the secret flagpole. The problem is that they used every 
every single annoying classic Mario mechanic ever, including heavy winds, a trampoline which sends you off screen, and a tight jump to spine a vine and climb to the bonus section. Did I mention that we had to play as Luigi? Cause that was sick. But when everything came together, it was genuinely a work of art. Let's see, we're doing it again. Luigi, lock in bro, lock in. None of this is hard, you know? I gotta stop psyching myself out. It's not hard, it's just easy. You go like this, you go like this, you hit that, you go like this, you go like this. Oh my fucking god, that was beautiful. What the fuck? That was beautiful. What the fuck? What? That, that, that was, that was beautiful. That was art. I'll give that a B tier. The Metroid Legend stage was underwhelming to say the least. I mean, I'm glad it wasn't as bad as all of the lag switch stages, but literally all I had to do was jump up a really tall room. The jumps were tight and really precise, but the worst part is that this section was so long that they just copy and pasted the same jumps over and over. But we sneak out with a W cause platforming is in my blood and we press forward. C minus? Tier? C tier? I don't know. The Legend of Zelda challenge is yet another maze I have to get through, and only this time I can't take damage because classic Zelda stage let you shoot a projectile only when you're at full health. The enemies also had a decent amount of RNG in their movements, which could be run ending if you take damage too early. It took me a couple of minutes, but we managed to beat it and move forward. I'll give that one a B tier. We do Legend of Zelda 2 where we have to beat Parappa Palace, which as you may have guessed, is another monumental maze ending with an annoying boss fight. But after about 25 minutes of trying we figure out the game plan, space the boss well enough to kill him quickly, and collect our second Zelda W. And I just want to say real quick, Zelda 2 is pretty fun. Even though I struggled on this mission, I was having fun the entire time. I might actually go back and genuinely play this game. I'm gonna give it a B tier in difficulty, but like A tier in video game. The Mario 2 Legend stage was just beating World 1-1, which is pretty easy. I think I actually beat this one on my first clear, uh, which is a good feeling, but also F tier in difficulty, I guess. And then Mario 3 decided that the right thing to do was make me speedrun the entirety of World 1, which is a really tall ask and the longer missions also hurt because a single attempt for this one took longer than 5 minutes to complete. I will say though, having to think about minor optimizations to save a second here or there was actually very fun. Also, we got this on our third clear, again I'm not saying the legend stages are easy because they're not, but they really give us a lot of breathing room to work with. Still, it was long as hell so I'll put this one in A tier. We jump into the Kirby Legendary Mission, and I just want to say very quickly that these Kirby missions have single-handedly made me hate that little bastard. I'm sparing you a lot of torture by not talking about every single Kirby challenge that we had to face, but please understand that by the time we got to the legend stage of Kirby, my vibes were more rancid than the town septic tank. The legend stage was just a massive monochrome stage I had to beat with tight jumps, a severe problem with lag and awful controls. I wish I had something interesting to say about this, but the optimization weren't even fun. They were like, okay, here I'll pray to God that I make the jump without puffing because if I don't, we have to start over. And to show you how mad I actually was, here's the footage of me clearing it. Ah, let's go! Oh, we're done with Kirby! Oh, we're done with Kirby! I never want to play that game ever again ever in my life, ever, ever, ever. Oh my goodness. I mean it when I say that beating this challenge almost felt better than beating the rest of the game because God do I hate Kirby's adventure. But we weren't done yet. There was one more legendary stage that we had to complete in order to prove that we were gaming goats. And that stage is Super Mario Bros, where we had to 
speedrun the entire game. Speedrunning Super Mario Bros, as I'm sure a lot of you may know, has been something plaguing me for years. We've done videos on it in the past, and every single time I've just come up a little bit short. But today would be the time that I prove I can actually win. I can actually defeat this game and every Nintendo game behind it. And instead of explaining to you how this run went, I'm just going to let you see what happened. Okay, we're good. Okay, bro. All right, kind of cooking, kind of cooking. Okay. I'm fucking up so bad. I'm fucking up so bad, it's painful. Beautiful. Absolute waste of time, but like this. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, f Ooh. Wasting so much time, and for what, bro? Oh, so close. Almost got 77. And then it just. Wait. Oh, actually, the stage is not that bad. This is the one where you just hug the top of these. Right? Whatever. Enough. Wow. What? What? What is the a what is the answer? What is the answer here? Like what? What the f do I do to that guy? Holy sh! He was covering everything. I hate the Hammer Bros, bro. Like, like so much, so much. Holy sh! I hate them so much. I hate the Hammer. They're my most hated character ever. Nice. Hammer bro right here. Ah! Ah! And with that completed, we finally set out and did what we said we were going to do. We proved that we are in fact God Gamers. This game was really interesting and somewhat tilting, but I mean it when I say that it was a fun, simple little way for casual gamers like myself to get into speedrunning. I might actually go back and improve my times, but for now, I am going to hold my head high and revel in the fact that I have proven I am a legendary gamer. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, here is a video that is like it that I think you'll have a lot of fun watching, and here is another one. In fact, this is a playlist. If you click that one, you're gonna have fun for hours. You know how cool that is? Go click that playlist and go have fun for hours. Go, get, get, click the, click it.